Hello all, here is issue two of The Index, the new video blog and podcast of the Toledo Unitarians. I'm T.K. Barger, editor of The Index and the Toledo Unitarians senior minister. Our entry for this issue is Index 151 on the index that began in Toledo in 1870 and on its editor, Francis Ellingwood Abbott, who was the minister at First Independent Society of Toledo. This is a recording of my sermon on January 3rd, 2021 at First Unitarian Society of Toledo, introducing the index. If you haven't done so already, please smash that button, as I'm told YouTubers say, and subscribe to the Toledo Unitarians YouTube channel so you can see the index and, if you're so inclined, to watch our streamed services, which you can see live at 11 a.m. Sundays or go to later on this channel. We welcome comments. Thanks for tuning in. On January 1st, 1870, 151 years and two days ago, the first issue of a weekly magazine, The Index, was published, promoting what it called free religion, a theological concept that has much in common with the humanist movement that developed soon after. The Index originated in Toledo and had as its editor, Francis Ellingwood Abbott, recently arrived as the minister of an ancestor congregation to our First Unitarian Church of Toledo, Ohio. His congregation was the First Independent Society of Toledo, and there are stories about that name and other congregation names, as well as stories of Abbott and other ministers which we'll be exploring today and in a new podcast and video blog we Toledo Unitarians are preparing to launch, called in tribute to our history, The Index. I'm the editor of our new index, with this being our Sunday service closest to the first index, New Year's Day 1870 anniversary, I bring today some index publication and editor history, adding to the introduction I put on our Toledo Unitarians YouTube channel January 1st. Much as I'd like to have launched a complete index issue on the 151st anniversary, the ways of this world mean we'll have to take our time, and not just because of the pandemic. I don't have the support or the stamina to make an eight-page or more newspaper-sized publication every week in addition to leading this congregation. Our index is going to start with occasional publication as it develops, so don't expect a weekly yet, but do watch for it. And I hope you'll look for the index and stay with us for that, as well as for our Sunday services and what else we might put on our Toledo Unitarians YouTube channel. There will be ties in this index 151 to the original index. We'll be looking in Frank Abbott's index, especially its early years in Toledo, before it and he moved to Boston and Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we'll also seek out supporting materials for the stories of Abbott and the Index. Today's story is just the beginning, giving some framework. In this new Index, we'll also have content about the more than 150 years of Unitarianism, Universalism, humanism, free thought, and liberal religion in Toledo and Northwest Ohio. I appreciate and acknowledge the local history collection of the Toledo Lucas County Public Library, which has those issues of the index in its collection, along with files 
of First Unitarian Toledo's history. Besides our Index 151 tied to the original through looking at history related to the Toledo Unitarians and including items relevant to religious liberalism, our new index will cover other topics, sometimes with no obvious tie to free religion, except the concept that religion can explore anything and everything. The index will include my own writing from sermons sometimes as preached and other times adapted for this forum, thanks to Eric Sills, Sandra Kozak Sills, and Stone Soup Recording Studios for help there. And there will be essays I'll write just for the index. This index gives me the opportunity to share interests outside of church, what appeals to me at the time. In a way, the index will merge the different tracks of my background as a minister and preacher, a journalist and columnist, and a librarian and researcher with interests ranging from popular culture to philosophy, not that those are mutually exclusive. And there's even an old index to now real life tie to pop culture and philosophy. I hope we'll have original material from others too, for the index will be based at First Unitarian Church of Toledo, and I hope will be a place where its members can contribute. Let me tell you a little bit about Frank Abbott and Toledo. Abbott came into the picture for the Unitarian Society of Toledo informally called the Unity, Unity Society, when Toledo's minister, Stephen Camp, accepted the call to the Third Uni Unitarian Congregation in Brooklyn, New York. Albert E. McComber was head of the Toledo Church's search committee. Here's what McComber wrote in his 1925 biography of the congregation. Mr. Abbott was, by mental qualities and thorough training, unquestionably the best equipped man who had recently entered the Unitarian ministry. A Harvard graduate in its art and divinity schools, and attested by his teachers as a man of rare attainments. Several articles upon philosophic topics by Mr. Abbott published in the North American Review had been widely read in Toledo, and some had been republished as leaflets for more general local information. Philosopher Gardner Williams, a former member and board member of our congregation, wrote about Abbott in the humanist publication Unity in 1952. Here's part of that article. Abbott was a pantheist, not a humanist, but he was a wonder for his period in American culture. He wanted a church without any creed in which ministers and members would be invited to believe what they thought was really true and to say what they believed upon appropriate occasions. Moreover, the church might help supply the appropriate occasions. In the church as he conceived it, humanists would have been welcome. The Unitarian Church today is as he wished it, liberal and creedless and his labors contributed largely to making it so. Abbott was 32 years old when Albert McComber contacted him about the Toledo pulpit. After graduating first in his class at Harvard, then starting seminary at Harvard Divinity School and completing his theology degree at Meadville Theological School, then in Pennsylvania, Abbott had accepted the call to be minister at the Unitarian Church in Dover, New Hampshire, and was ordained there in 1864. W. Creighton Peden's Dictionary of Unitarian Universalist Biography entry on Abbott from 2009 says that Abbott started preaching on free thinking during his first year in Dover. He associated free thinking with the thought Peden stated that liberal Christians employing complete intellectual freedom 
should not be required to base their religion on the authority of Christ. In addition to the theological aspect of pre-thinking, Peden says that Abbott was the first American philosopher to endorse Darwin's theory of evolution. Abbott had an intellectual goal of emphasizing the scientific method, of finding a way for religion and philosophy to adapt to science. That transition to free religion, as Abbott came to call it, coincided with some institutional rigidity in Unitarianism. What came to be called the Battle of Syracuse in 1865 was a controversy in which the National Conference of Unitarian Churches established a creed saying that Unitarians were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and that Jesus of Nazareth was King, Lord, and Christ. This was to be offered as amendments to the Constitution of the American Unitarian Association. Abbott objected, and over the next couple of years with some other people, he founded the Free Religious Association. In Dover, New Hampshire, he resigned from the pulpit, formed an independent society instead at what had been the Unitarian Church, and some members of the Unitarian congregation found the fine print in their endowment and sued for his not following the intent of the church's funding. The state Supreme Court found in the Unitarians' favor, so he couldn't use the Unitarians' resources, including the building, anymore. Then Toledo came calling. This is from Abbott's May 12, 1869 reply to Macomber's first letter asking if Abbott would be interested in being Toledo's minister. Your invitation makes me hope I have been mistaken in this. If your people are willing to make half as great sacrifices for religious liberty as I have been called to make, there is no life I would prefer to that of a free public advocate of American religion. This winter, I have been supporting myself by private tuition of suspended college students. But if I can be a minister, not of Jesus, but of humanity, I am ready for the work. You seem so well acquainted with the general character of my course hitherto that I need enter on no explanation of it. Let me come straight to the point and deal with you as I hope to be dealt with by you. If your society is resolved at all events to retain the names Unitarian and Christian, and to listen to no reasons that would lead them out upon the broad ground of absolute independency, I must say somewhat sadly but very firmly, I am not the man you seek. But if you are willing to have the question raised, and not afraid to hear why I regard the shaking off of all sectarian names and connections is a profound practical consequence, then I shall be glad to spend the months of July and August with you and submit to your judgment the terms on which I can honorably continue to preach. I have no desire to dictate to anyone. I have only a determination to square my own course with principles that bend for no one. At the end of the two months, if you still choose to be Unitarians, we may at least part good friends. Or if you are willing then to take a more advanced position, we may yet work together for years in the cause of free religion. Unless you feel willing to have me raise this question, I ought to say beforehand that California has not enough gold to tempt me to connect myself as its minister with any Christian society. It would be neither right nor decent for me to do so. But if you are as radical and free as your letter leaves me to hope, I think we may agree together that the only manly position is aloof from all denominations. All I wish 
is an opportunity to state my ground and the reasons for it. If your society is not free enough to be willing to hear me on this subject, let our communication end right here. Let me add that I believe that the society which first takes distinctly and intrepidly the ground of free religion will be a tremendous power throughout America. It takes pluck and nerve to adopt it, but every man of such a society will be proud to have been a member in it if he lives 25 years. I have taken the only ground that is absolutely free and wait till the world moves forward to it. A single man though I am, with but two or three friends at my side, the power of ideas makes me today stronger than the whole Unitarian denomination. Do not suppose that for an instant I could think of any compromise, any concession to expediency. I could better afford to go to the almshouse than to budge an inch from my position. Do you really want such a man to occupy your pulpit? If you do, I rejoice that so much courage has been born in my native land, and whether I am fit to do your work or not, such a man you will surely find. Back to Peden's entry on Abbott in the Dictionary of Unitarian Universalist Biography. In 1869, Abbott became the minister of the Unitarian Society of Toledo, Ohio. He made it a condition of his employment that the society withdraw from the National Conference and change its name from Unitarian to Independent. As his sermons were really philosophical essays and his pastoral style was negligent, the congregation dwindled in size and, in 1872, stopped paying his salary. This settlement confirmed his unsuitability as a parish minister. While in Toledo in 1870, he founded The Index, a weekly magazine with a free, with, with excuse me, with while in Toledo in 1870, he founded The Index, a weekly magazine with a radical religious and social philosophy. From its inception, The Index functioned as the voice of the Free Religious Association. Albert McComber was very much involved. Besides bringing Abbott to Toledo, McComber was one of the founders of The Index. This is from McComber's 1925 church history. In 1869, the publication of a religious journal devoted to free religion was under consideration. Mr. Abbott volunteered his services as editor. David R. Locke of the Toledo Blade and Albert E. McComber, remember this is McComber writing about his own involvement, guaranteed the printing and circulation for two years. The first number was issued under the name The Index, January 1, 1870. The paper received warm approval from liberal thinkers the country over. It took high rank with the best existing journals. The paper was published in Toledo until 1873, when the Independent Society having disbanded, Mr. Abbott removed to Cambridge, Mass., and the paper was thereafter published in Boston. Mr. Abbott continued as editor until 1880. Soon thereafter, the paper was purchased by Edward C. Hegler, a wealthy Illinois miner, and the publication office removed to Chicago. Later, the name was changed to The Open Court, and the policy of the paper was changed to conform to certain views held by Mr. Hegler and his son-in-law, Dr. Karras, on monism. You can say that monism is a philosophical and theological concept that all is one. Dr. Karras became the new editor. Today the open court exists as part of Cricket Media, primarily a publisher of educational children's magazines, but Cricket has open court publishing for adult, academic, and mass market books including the Popular Culture and Philosophy series. 
there's that old index tie to current times I mentioned earlier. Let's get back to Abbott with the description from our former minister, Wendy Jerome, in a 1998 sermon. Now we get to the sobering part of our history. The Reverend Francis E. Abbott, a brilliant man and powerful speaker, was called to the pulpit in 1869. Attendance swelled. Now the versions are not quite clear. Apparently, Francis Abbott was not afraid to give theological names of his beliefs. These were the beliefs that he shared with his congregation and with a growing group of interested religious liberals in the city. However, the names of his beliefs frightened listeners off. So perhaps did the new name of the congregation, the Independent Society of Toledo. A more conservative group splintered off from the Independent Society, calling themselves the Unity Church Association. The Unity Church group called as minister a Shakespearean scholar, the Reverend Charles Cravens. No matter that later on, when asked to define his religious beliefs, Charles Cravens's views easily echoed those of Francis Abbott. Gossip or shallow resentment prevailed. The two liberal groups did not rejoin. The Independent Society, despite its new church at the corner of Adams and 10th, faded out. The Unity Church faded out as well. A church history manuscript by Ethel E. Brown described both Abbott's downfall and the effect on Unitarianism in Toledo. She wrote, Ultimately, the church board of directors was forced to the conclusion that Reverend Abbott was too scholarly, too learned, and philosophical to make himself understood by most of those he tried so earnestly to reach, thus making his resignation imperative and inevitable. With Reverend Abbott's departure from the city, Unitarian Church activities came to a standstill. But dreaming of greater things to come, Toledo's faithful met when and where they could, thus keeping alive their common interest in the liberal cause. No longer was there an independent society. No longer was there a unity church society to sustain and fortify them. For 12 long pastorless years, Toledo liberals hungered to have their way of life enriched from a pulpit of their own. But not until 1887 did a rift in the dark clouds of their spiritual isolation appear, a ray of joyous hope in the person of Reverend Alan Gary Jennings, sent by the American Unitarian Association to awaken new interest and to effect, if possible, reorganization of Toledo liberals. As for the Christianization of Unitarianism, in the end, Abbott's view prevailed. Returning to Macomber's church history from 1925, the amendments to the Constitution of the American Unitarian Association adopted at Syracuse in 1865 have been withdrawn. The special occasion for maintaining the free religious association no longer obtains. That platform is now practically the platform of the American Unitarian Association, maintained by an able and scholarly ministry. And as a place in our church for humanism, the theological and philosophical position with which I most identify, here is what Gardner Williams from our church and the author of the 1951 book, Humanistic Ethics, put forth. Whether or not the average liberal minister will preach humanism successfully in the 21st century will depend upon the intellectual temper of the congregations. Ministers can do some things to educate their congregation, but many other factors enter in. One is economic prosperity. Another is the teaching and interpretation of science in the secular schools, both elementary and advanced. If humanists want humanistic churches, we shall have to tend to these other things as well. 
all of the aspects of human culture interact and are mutually interdependent. So, my companion Toledo Unitarians and our friends, let's have that intellectual temper, keep the church economically viable, and look to science. Journey with us in our tellings, our writing and video of the Index and Liberal Religion. Issue 1 will premiere soon. Blessings and Happy New Year 2021. So be it.